Hello folks, Bill Wilson here from Wilson Combat and welcome to the Wilson Combat YouTube channel. I've got my old buddy uh, Masad Oob here with me today and uh, since we've got two dinosaurs here uh, we're going to talk about something that uh, kind of comes from our era. Uh, Masad, why, uh, why do you shoot low thumb on your, for your grip position? Well, if the viewers want to uh, uh, go to the Wilson Combat YouTube site You'll find uh, about a year ago we did a video on uh, thumb placement uh, as far as grasp. And basically it breaks down to four different positions. The flagged thumb that's currently popular today with the thumb vertical pointed toward the sky. The high thumb position with the thumb might be the thumb riding the safety on the 1911 or up on an angle like this to off safe uh, a military M9 pistol. The straight thumb that's particularly popular in competitive shooting, and finally the low thumb. Essentially, each has strengths and weaknesses. What I found, having shot a lot of uh, of the others, starting as a kid with the 45 degree thumb, because by golly, that's where all the marksmanship manuals said your thumb should be. Uh, they even had the grips with the thumb rest that would force your th thumb mm -hmm. to be there, uh, and uh, the straight the straight thumb, basically. The low thumb, uh, I really got into when I was shooting revolvers and PPC. And over the years for me, uh, because my focus is primarily defensive shooting, and especially teaching other people defensive shooting, a whole lot of whom are not in the guns as much as the folks who watch this. And essentially, the, the two attributes that brought me back to the, the low thumb were both strength related. Uh, while you're watching this, just take one hand and what I want you to do is leave the thumb straight up. Close the other fingers. If you want, you can disarticulate the trigger finger like you were shooting or use all four. You'll see the same effect either way. Now with the thumb straight up, crush as hard as you can your maximum hand strength. Slowly bring the thumb down, still crushing max force, still measuring. Feel how much the hand strength increases. By the time it bends that median joint uh, on the gun, your thumb might be touching your, your middle fingertip. You're at absolute maximum physical strength. Now, I found some of the great champion shooters that you know. Uh, heck, uh, you and I a year ago were shooting with them. Uh, Rob Latham and Bill Rogers. Rob, uh, Bob, Rob Latham and uh, Brian Enos, his training partner, were the ones who popularized the straight thumb hold and they did it with kind of a cocking of the wrist that would help lock the wrist. You want to have the middle, middle knuckles straight in line with the long bones of the forearm. That helped to control recoil. The other hand would be in a position like this. It allowed the, whole, the thumb being out of the way here, allowed the whole drumstick of the support hand thumb to press in laterally. And a lot of people find that gives them the most comfortable grasp and the best control. Bill Rogers found the same, and at his shooting school, Rogers Shooting School is kind of the PhD of surgical <laughs> speed shooting. Um, they are emphatic, both thumbs should be straight. But both of them will tell you, if you're shooting one-handed, curl the thumb down. And when you ask them why, their answer is going to be, it's stronger. Mm -hmm. Now, if you study a lot of gunfights, uh, which we can do now more than ever, thanks to the prevalence of surveillance cameras, police dash cams, and today police body cams, a whole lot of reactive shooting. That is, you didn't know there was a, a gunfight in the offing and you didn't have the gun in your hand to start. When you have to react, often this hand is pushing your buddy out of the line of fire, it's working a flashlight or a communications device or something. Or the, if you had to turn toward the threat, this arm wants to instinctively go out for balance. And the subconscious realizes, this hand ain't getting there. We got to go with what we got. Now, some of you who watch this are into guns enough that you can, on the fly, figure out, is this going to be one-handed or two? Do I want my thumb here or do I want my thumb here? I think that's too much to ask for the people who aren't deeply into this as gun enthusiasts. So I figured if we're going to have a high percentage of the incidents are going to end up being one-handed events, and they've lost 50% of the flesh and bone they had to stabilize the gun, I want to get every ounce out of the, the one hand we've got left. The curl down thumb does that. The other advantage 
is seen here, and I'm going to hold the gun up like this so it doesn't cross my brother Bill. If there's an attack on the gun, an attempt to disarm you, some, something you'll never see on the range, but you have to constantly prepare for in real world defense. If the gun is struck in this direction, it tends to want to peel out of the hand. Now, try yourself with a triple checked unloaded gun, and let me check this one more time. Empty chamber sight, empty chamber feel, empty magwell sight and feel, and we'll triple check. Yep. Okay. As this hand attempts to disarm this hand, if the thumb is up here, you can see how hard I'm holding this. My nail beds are probably white by now. I can't stop it. I don't have the leverage. With the finger 45 degrees up, same thing. With the finger straight, same thing and worse because now the thumb levers out and if I don't let go and pull my hand away and surrender the gun quickly, my thumb is going to be broken or dislocated. You'll find an interesting thing. If the thumb is curled down, there's an effect of closing the gate and the hand can hang on long enough to execute a retention technique and recover control of the gun. So for all those reasons, I went back after many years of high thumb and straight thumb shooting to the curled down thumb. And I found both in competition, qualification, and training drills. The difference in shooting ability and scores and speed was virtually nil. So for me, it was all, all gain. If you don't have a dummy gun to try that with right now, or you're in a gun-free environment when you watch this, you can replicate by just taking the gun hand like this, and we'll pretend this hand is the gun that's being driven against the thumb. Try to, try to keep that thumb straight up, pointed toward the threat, as this hand comes over. It can't stop it. 45 degree, the so-called high thumb, this hand can't stop it. Straight thumb, this hand can't stop it, and you'll feel what's starting to happen right here at the proximal joint. But curl the thumb down, you can't move it. It's just the, the way the, the skeletal muscular yeah. support structure of the hand works. So those are my reasons. Bill, I think you came from a little bit different direction. Well, as you know, I, I was always a revolver shooter long before I even owned a semi-auto of any sort. You know, I was, you know, actually uh, pretty proficient with a, with a wheel gun. I saw you, you, know, you were damn uh, proficient with back, a wheel gun. Back in the old days before I could hit the ground with a semi-auto. So, uh, and I, you know, I just, I learned to shoot a revolver with a low thumb. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's the position that I did there. You know, I mean, that, that's the grip. And so after hundreds of thousands of rounds, mostly through Colt Pythons, you know, with that grip, when I did start shooting some autos, it just didn't make sense to me to, to change that. That always worked, you know. And then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the 1911, you know, as you draw the gun, you flip, flip the safety off, the thumb just goes down, and this, this hand comes on and captures everything, and now, now I've, I've got total control of the gun. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's worked pretty well for me for a lot of years, and I just never saw a reason to, you know, to change. You know, when it was already working and I can do both platforms with exactly the same grip. I don't have to have a grip for the semi-auto and a grip for the revolver. Now, there's one other big advantage I found with the low thumb, <clears throat> particularly with the 1911, and any pistol with a grip safety like the, uh, the Springfield XD, for example. If you look at your hand, take uh, look at me here and bring your, bring your thumb straight or high. Now, look at the web of your own hand. You'll see how it pulls back as the thumb goes higher. Straight thumb, is come, that web of the hand is coming a little more forward, but watch how much more forward it comes when you curl the thumb down. Now we're in a situation where we might have had to grab this thing in a, a desperate moment and not get a perfect grasp. Okay, if the thumb is up here, it's not going to reliably activate that grip safety. That's why a whole lot of the folks who teach the flag thumb will teach you to use a striker-fired gun that doesn't have the grip safety. But as you come down, as the thumb curls down, we guarantee depression of the grip safety, we guarantee the shot when we need it. Yeah, I noticed when you were doing that demonstration there, you were focusing on the web of your hand, but I, from the angle I was looking at it, you could also see the area that's actually you know, going to depress the grip safety. Right. I could see that moving yeah. Moving in also. Yeah. So, you know, it's like you say, it's going to absolutely positively deactivate any, any gun that has a 
grip style, you know, grip style safety on it. Another thing we have to watch for, particularly with the small frame revolvers, the very high powered revolvers and unusual design revolvers. If we've got straight thumbs here, we've got a Smith & Wesson 686, triple checked empty. If I'm in a two hand straight thumb hold, notice the proximity of my thumb to the barrel cylinder gap. Now with a 22, my thumb is going to get a little bit warm and a little bit dirty. 125 grain 357 magnum out of this revolver, we're going to get some flame cutting. That stuff is known to flame cut steel mm -hmm. frames. What do you think it's going to do with flesh and bone? And now you've got a little more forward on a big X frame 460 magnum or a 500 magnum hunting revolver. There are pictures out there of what that does to the human thumb and it is not pretty. If you have the gun with the underslung barrel, where the barrel is here instead of here, uh, the Chiapa Reno, uh, Rhino, which is an excellent little 357 Magnum if you haven't tried it, and its predecessor, similar design, the Matiba, and also an Italian design. Now that barrel cylinder gap is right here. And if I'm shooting here, there is going to be flesh and blood flying, and I might literally end up with a thumb that's a whole lot shorter than it is right now. So we have to adapt to the hand size, the size of the gun. If you have a very small gun with a very small uh, trigger reach, the curl down thumb might be contraindicated because you're getting so much finger in and the trigger reach is so short, the thumb literally acts as a finger stop and blocks the trigger stroke. So we have to adapt to the tool, we have to adapt to the shape of the hands, and we have to adapt to the mission. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Folks, thank you for tuning in and watching the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, be sure and, and sign up for the YouTube, YouTube channel and ring the bell and leave. We like to see you leave comments. And uh, if you want to stay in tune with what's going on at Wilson Combat overall, uh, you can always sign up for our e-newsletter on the website. Thank you. Mm -hmm.